So we introduced you all to Sean O'Brien at last year's Free Thought Day. Um, and so, so many people remarked on how great he was and we wanted to have him back this year. So Sean has taught, performed, and directed in theaters across the country. But even if you haven't heard of Sean, um, you've certainly heard of Ron Robert Ingersoll, the great agnostic. So considered by many to be one of the best orators who ever lived, Ingersoll was noted for his defense of agnosticism and many of his speeches and works. Joining us now is Sean O'Brien performing as Robert Ingersoll. Oops. There he is. All right, give yourselves a round of applause for Robert Ingersoll. I believe in the government of kindness. I believe in truth, in investigation, in free thought. I would like to give a little bit more liberty to men, a little bit more liberty to women. I do not believe that the hand of want will be forever extended in the world. I do not believe that the prison will forever scar the ground. I do not believe that the shadow of the gallows will forever curse the earth. I do not believe that it will always be true that the men and women who work the hardest have the least to eat and the least to wear. I do believe that the day will come when liberty Morality and justice, like the rings of Saturn, will surround the earth. That the world will be better, and every true man and woman and every free man and woman will do what they can to bring about the advancement, the religion of human advancement. We have already compared the benefits of theology and science. When the theologian governed, the world was full of huts and hovels for the many, palaces and cathedrals for the few. To nearly all the children of man, reading and writing were unknown arts. The poor were clad in rags and skins. They devoured crusts and gnawed bone. The day of science dawned, and the luxuries of a century ago are the necessities of today. Men and women in the middle ranks of life have more of the conveniences and elegancies than the kings and princes of the theological times. And above and more than this is the development of mind. There is more of value in the brain of the average man of today than there was in the brains of the world 400 years ago. These blessings did not fall from the sky. These benefits did not drop from the outstretched hands of priests. They were not found in cathedrals or behind altars, nor were they searched for with holy candle. They were not discovered with the closed eyes of prayer, nor were they in answer to superstitious supplication. These are the blessings of freedom. The, ble the benefits of reason, observation, and experience, and for them all, man is indebted to man. It is contended by some that ours is a Christian government founded upon the Bible and that anyone who looks upon that book as false or foolish are destroying the foundations of our government. The fact is, our government was not founded upon the rights of, men, uh, the rights of gods, but upon the rights of men. Our Constitution was not framed to declare and uphold the deity of Christ, but the sacredness of humanity. We are the first nation ever to be conceived by the people, for the people. We are the only nation on earth with which the gods have had nothing to do. And yet, 
There are those dishonest and cowardly who would solemnly declare that ours is a Christian government and that our free institutions are based upon the infamous laws of Jehovah. All laws for the purpose of making men worship God are born of the same spirit that kindled the fires, that burned the heretics, and lovingly built the dungeons of the Inquisition. All laws defining and punishing blasphemy, making it a crime to give your opinion about Jehovah, to enjoy yourself on a Sunday, to eat on fast days, to be happy during Lent, to dispute a priest, to ask for evidence, were passed by impudent bigots and should be immediately repealed by honest men. An infinite God should not have to join into partnership with state legislatures to protect himself. He should certainly not have to enact laws to prevent himself from being questioned or laughed at. Superstition has done enough harm already. Religion suspects everything that is pleasant, anything that is joyous, and they often have the idea that God feels best when we feel worst. They have stoned to death the joy of nature with the cold rock of ignorance and fear. Church and state are two vultures that have fed at the heart of chained Prometheus. I say, let the human race have a chance. Let every man and woman think for themselves and express that thought. There is no wrath in the serene heavens. There is no scowl in the blue of the sky. Upon the throne of the universe, tyranny does not sit as king. That is my doctrine. And I will do what I can while I live to increase in the American people that sense of independence and personhood. I believe in the gospel of this world. I believe in happiness right here. I do not believe in drinking skim milk all my life with the expectation of butter beyond the clouds. I believe, I say, in the this, the gospel of this world. This is a mighty good world. There are lots of good people in the world. There's lots of happiness in this world. And I say, let us, every single one of us, do whatever we can to increase it. Our civilization is not Christian. It did not fall from the sky. It is not the product, the result of divine inspiration. It is the child of invention, of discovery, of applied knowledge, that is to say, of science. When the human race becomes great and grand enough to admit that all have equal rights, when thought is untrammeled, when worship means the doing of useful things and religion means the discharge of obligation to one fellow man, then and only then will the world be civilized. Thank you.